Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I drive an awful lot for my job, and the other day I was driving back from the UP. One of the ways I keep myself awake is I ask myself questions and see if I can come up with an answer. And I asked a good question the other day, and that is, how far is it to the moon? So let's sit down today and see if we can figure that out using some basic math and come up with an answer and maybe even get some bonuses from it. Okay, in science, one of the things that we do is we build on the achievements of others. We don't have to prove every single aspect of something that we're looking at. For example, if I tell you that I'm six feet two inches tall, I don't need to prove the fact that my ruler that I measured myself with is exactly 12 inches and why 12 inches is a foot. And so we're going to start off building on some things that we had. Now we're going to start off with the Earth being a planet and the Moon being in orbit around that planet. Now, we know that our orbit is approximately 28 days and we have an unknown distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the Moon. Well, more. There, we'll make a little smiley face. But that is a certain distance. Now, on an earlier video, one of the questions that I asked myself is if the Earth is rotating in a certain direction, what was keeping an object on the surface of the Earth? Okay, so we've got two forces. One is the force of gravity, and the second is centrifugal force opposing it. Now, the force of gravity is basically the object's weight. So what we're going to have here is force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration of gravity, or 9.8 meters per second squared. That's what's keeping us on the Earth. Now, the centrifugal force, which tries to pull us off the Earth, is mass times velocity squared over radius. Now, there's an interesting situation here. If we were to set the weight mass times acceleration keeping us on the Earth and make it equal to the mass times the linear velocity squared over the radius, which is trying to pull us off the Earth, we could figure out at what velocity this object would become weightless. Now, when I did all the math for that, what I found was an interesting thing, and that was that in order for an object at the equator to be weightless, the Earth would have to rotate every 84 minutes. Okay, so let's take this to the next step. We have a small mass, and then we have a second mass that is the distance of one radius away. Now we know that that mass will orbit this one every 84 minutes. What if we had another mass out here that was of a distance r plus x, with this part right here being the x? Can we calculate how long that planet, or mass, would orbit? Well, it turns out, yes, we can, and we'll use Kepler's law. Now, Kepler's law has two parts to it. One is kind of a proportion, and what that says is that the time it takes to complete one orbit 
is proportionate to the radius of that orbit cubed. Now what does this proportionate mean? It means that time, if you want to get the exact time, equals some constant times radius cubed. Now that constant is actually 4 pi squared divided by the gravitational constant times the mass of the object that it is orbiting. Now let's just take a minute and have a look at this. So t squared would equal this constant times r cubed. Now notice that if we rearrange this a little bit and move this over to here, we get t squared over r cubed equals a constant. Now, it doesn't say what t is, and it doesn't say what r is, because it works for any t and any r of any body in orbit around another. So, if we look at the amount of time, say the Earth rotates squared over the radius of the Earth cubed, that will equal the time it takes the moon to orbit squared over the radius of the moon cubed. If we rearrange this a little bit, we can actually solve for that number because we know this one, we know that one is 84 minutes, we know that's 4,000 miles, so we can just plug these numbers right in. Here, we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So, we've got T Earth over R Earth, and that's cubed, and that's squared, equals T Moon squared over R Moon cubed. That equals if we move it around to something that looks like this, we can have radius of the moon cubed equals transit or orbital time of the moon times the radius of the earth cubed divided by the time it takes the earth to make one rotation. Pretty easy, huh? Okay guys, let's go ahead and get real. So, the time it takes the moon to orbit once around the Earth is about 28 days. Now, if you multiply those 28 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes, we find that that's 40,320 miles, and we're going to want to square that. Now, the distance uh, of the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles, and that's going to be cubed. And we're going to divide it by the time it would take the Earth to rotate in order for things to be weightless or essentially in orbit on the equator, and that would be 84 minutes, and that's squared. So we're going to go ahead and do the math on this real quick and come up with an answer. 1.475 times 10 to the 16th. Okay, we take a cube root of that. And here's our answer. Now, according to Google, which means it must be right, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is 238,900 miles. We got 245,000. 
219 miles. This means that we overestimated it approximately 3%. Now where did that 3% error come in? First, the moon's orbit is not exactly 28 days. As a matter of fact, it's actually 27.32 days. So that's one source of error. Now, another source of error is the 84 minutes that I used for the Earth's rotation to make an object weightless on the equator was also a slightly rounded number, and it may be a few seconds off. And on a small number like that, a few seconds may make a difference. Now let's go ahead and do some extra credit. All right, let's do a couple of things. First of all, the International Space Station orbits the Earth every 92 minutes. Let's use this math and try and figure out how high that space station would be above the surface of the Earth. Recall to find how high an object is. We know that on the surface of the Earth, it's 84 minutes. Now, the distance to the ISS will be the radius of the Earth plus its orbital height above the Earth. You can figure this out in either miles or kilometers, as, as you may wish. The next bonus question is going to be, how far would a satellite have to be above the Earth? Actually, you know, Rather than say above the Earth, let's say from the center of the Earth to the orbit, that's how they calculate the orbits, to rotate once every 24 hours. And they call that geostationary. Why don't you go ahead and figure out how high that orbit would have to be? Okay, guys, let's go for the bonus round. Who knows who this gentleman is? Yep, that is the Greek mathematician Aristarchus. Now what's interesting about Aristarchus is that well before Christ, he was able to determine the distance between the sun and the earth in orbital increments of the moon. And here's how he did it. Now, as you can see, we have the earth down here in the, uh, in the lower left corner. And above it is the moon. Now there is a time twice a month where the moon is half illuminated by the sun. It is a half moon. Now his thought was that if the sun was infinitely far away, when that moon was lit half, it would be 90 degrees to the earth. However, if the moon was not 90 degrees from the earth, there was some angle and if you looked where those lines crossed, that would be the distance to the sun. And what he determined was, uh, initially, it was about 1 in 19, but that was because his measurement devices were pretty primitive. With more modern instruments, we can find it's about 89 degrees and 51 minutes. Okay, so at 89 degrees, 51 minutes, it works out to be about 1 to 385. I know it says 400 there, but they rounded it a little bit. So if we take our 245,000 miles to the moon times 385, that gives us a distance to the sun. And what is that distance? It's 94,409,000 322 miles. Now, let's go ahead and see how we did with that. That's 92.96 million. So we're off roughly one and a half million out of nearly 100 million. So we're below 2% error there. That's not too bad. Okay, so here's the ISS problem. The orbital time, or the orbital distance for the ISS to the cubed is 92 squared times the radius of the Earth cubed divided by 84 minutes squared. And the answer for that 
if you take the cube root, will be 4,250 miles. As the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles, that means the ISS is approximately 250 miles above the surface of the Earth in low Earth orbit. Now if we look at the orbital height of the geostationary satellite, the orbit cubed equals 1440 minutes squared, that's the number of minutes in 24 hours, times the radius of the Earth cubed, divided by 84 squared. And the answer is 26,593 miles. Did you get the right answers? Do you understand the question? If you have any further questions, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. And just in case you were curious, we hit it within about 400 miles, which really isn't all that bad at all. Well guys, I, I don't know about you, but I think that was kind of fun, and it's pretty simple math. All you have to do is just kind of look at it systematically, and it's pretty easy to solve. I had another question that I came up with while I was driving, and that is, why is it that we always see the same side of the moon? So, I'm going to do another video here in a couple of days, and we're going to try and answer that question too. I think you'll be surprised. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really like to have you on board. See you soon. This rabbit hole's too deep for